Hello everyone, welcome to my channel Prosto Hub. My name is Dr. Jolsna and today we are going to discuss the final session of our topic Articulators. Now let us see the contents of this session. So I hope everyone has followed the previous three sessions and in today's session we are going to discuss mainly the programming of semi-adjustable articulator in detail. So before getting into topic, I request everyone to please do like and share my videos if you are finding these useful. And if you are new to this channel Prosto Hub, please do subscribe to get more videos on prosthodontic subjects. And if you have any queries, topic suggestions or any feedbacks, you can comment below this video or you can mail me at this mail id. So without any delay, let's get into the topic. So before beginning the programming of articulator, first we have to know what is zeroing of an articulator and this is an important viva question too. So what is zeroing of articulator? It is a process of standardizing the articulator to a reproducible starting point. So the accurate use of a semi-adjustable articulator actually depends upon the dentist ability to consistently zero the instrument before mounting the cast. So in case of a Hano wide view articulator, several criteria must be met for the articulator to be zeroed correctly. Now this criteria includes the incisal pin must strike the incisal table in the center of the table both anterior posteriorly and right to left. So we have discussed about this in our previous session. The incisal pin should strike the incisal table at the center. Now the lateral wings of the incisal table should be set to the zero marking. This is by adjusting the elevating screws. Now the horizontal condyla guidance as well as the lateral condyla guidance should be set at 30 degree on both the sides and the thickest line of the incisal pin should be in flush with the upper member. This also we have discussed in our previous session. Those who want to know in detail do watch the previous session of articulator. Now there should be no side to side play or a side to side movement between the upper and lower member when the centric locks are secured. So once you secure the centric lock, it should be only moving in a hinge axis. There should be no side to side movement. So this is the criteria for zeroing of Hano articulator. Now, what is the significance of zeroing? So as per manufacturer instructions, we have to start with a baseline or zero value and then mount the cast and program it. So all those values that can be manually changed in an articulator should be at baseline or the zero value before mounting the cast. So this is about zeroing of articulator. We do programming by means of a split cast technique. What is this split cast technique? It is a simple and reliable means of obtaining a high degree of accuracy in articulator mounting and also verification of articulator settings from occlusal records. So this technique was first mentioned by Needles in 1923 and later popularized by Lauritsen. So basically here the it's a maxillary cast constructed in two parts with a horizontal division. So here you can see the maxillary cast is split into two parts. That's why it's called as split cast technique. And it is constructed in two parts with a horizontal division. Now the first part of the um, split maxillary cast with index groove that is called as the primary base. So this is the primary base. And the second part which is fitted onto the master cast and attached to the upper member of the articulator it is called as the secondary base or the sandwich. So this part is the primary base and the upper one is the secondary base or the sandwich. Now the perfect fit of the master cast sandwich and the upper member of articulator verifies the correct centric relation record. And if there is any gap between these parts that means that the previous recording of centric relation is incorrect. So this method provides a reliable means to obtain high degree of accuracy in articulator mounting. Now let's see how this is done. All six wedge shape notches are made on top of the primary cast. So you can see here six wedge shape notches or grooves are made and these cuts are made from the border towards the center of the cast. Two notches located on the posterior border, two in the first molar region and two in the lateral incisor region and the approximate depth is 2.5 cm. Now once these grooves are made, 
Then the separating medium is applied properly onto the grooves as well as onto the surface in order to easily remove the primary base from secondary base once slip cast is made. Once the separating medium is applied, you have to wrap the borders with the help of a boxing wax and then the die stone is vibrated onto the top of the primary base and allowed to set. Once the die stone is set, you can remove the boxing wax and then the excess stone is removed and also the sides of the cast are smoothed using a cast trimmer and you have to produce a sharp clear line of demarcation between the primary and secondary base. Now the cast are carefully washed and the bases are separated carefully. Thus you have made a split cast. We know that we have to zero the articulator before mounting. And then the combined primary and secondary base cast are mounted on the upper member of the articulator with the help of phase 4 record. And then the lower cast should be mounted from the tentative jaw relation record. And then we have to check whether the mounting is correctly made. So to ascertain this, the articulator is opened and the primary base cast is seated with the uh, centric relation record with the centralized pressure and carefully held in this position while the upper member of the articulator with the secondary base is closed into the primary base. Now, if the secondary base correctly fits into the primary base, the mounting has been properly made. And even the smallest error in mounting is clearly seen as the secondary base cannot fit properly or accurately into the primary base. So once it fits, that means our mounting is proper or accurate. So this is how we check the accuracy of our mounting using split cast technique. See the benefits of split cast technique. So first of all, to ascertain the accuracy of centric record in dentate as well as edentulous patients. So while programming of articulators, split cast technique help us to verify the centric records and then adjust horizontal condylar inclination in the articulator. Now it also help us to verify centric records during a full mouth rehabilitation case. The next advantage is to observe processing errors during complete denture remount. So if there is any processing error, we can see that the secondary base will not fit accurately into the primary base. Now it also simplifies waxing and carving procedures since the master cast can be easily removed from the articulator and placed back. So these are the benefits of split cast technique. You can expect split cast technique as a short note or even it can be asked in your chair side viva. Coming to programming the semi-adjustable articulator. So the semi-adjustable articulator is customized to, to suit each patient through a systematic process of programming. And if not programmed, a semi-adjustable articulator is no better than a simple hinge articulator. Once this gets programmed, it is upgraded to the status of a simulator. So the relationship between the intercondylar axis and the maxillary cast, opening and closing arc, vertical dimension, and the path on which the jaw moves are all simulated through the process of programming. So here, the cast on the articulator must be related to the hinge axis and phase 4 transfers the relationship of maxilla to the condylar axis and then the mandible is indirectly related to the condylar axis by relating it to maxilla. And this is done by recording the centric relation and using protrusive records and lateral excursive records. And then the articulator is programmed to simulate the mandibular movements of the patient. Now let us see how programming is done. So first of all, the maxillary cast is mounted to the upper member of semi-adjustable articulator using a face bow. And then the split cast is issued. And then the tentative jaw relation is registered. And the mandibular cast is mounted to the lower member of the articulator using this tentative centric record. Now using the centric relation record we have mounted the cast. So the centric relation as well as the VDO is already programmed and now we have to program the condylar elements and incisal elements. So horizontal condylar guidance we program using the protrusive interoclusal check records and lateral guidance in Heno we calculate using the formula H by 8 plus 12 and the incisal guidance we program during the stage of trial. The next step is to uh, verify our tentative centric record using graphic traces. 
So for this we use extra oral tracer which consists of a central bearing point. So this is the central bearing point and a central bearing plate and also it has got a stylus and a table. Now we have to attach the central bearing plate and the central bearing point onto the ribs. So this is attached in such a way that the vertical dimension is maintained along with uniform gap between the occlusal rims. So first the central bearing plate is attached or submerged into the maxillary occlusal rim without changing its shape. So the maxillary occlusal rim is unaltered whereas the mandibular occlusal rim can be reduced up to 4 mm and then the central bearing point is attached onto the rim in flush with the occlusal surface and this is placed in such a way that the central bearing point should be in the center of the mandibular arch. Now after placing these two onto the rims you have to place it in the articulator and see whether the stylus sorry the central bearing point is making a point contact with the central bearing plate. So you can see from the lingual view the central bearing point is making a point contact with the central bearing plate plate. So the, you can high adjust the height of this uh, central bearing point so that it makes a point contact and one more thing you have to take care is that there should be a minimum of 3 millimeter gap between the heels of this rims. So once you check these in the articulator then you have to transfer this into the patient's mouth and check for this uniform of uniformity in the 3 millimeter gap in the posterior region and also this point contact that the central bearing point makes with the table. Now once this is verified then you have to remove the rims from the patient's mouth and you can attach the stylus and the table. So the stylus the tracer assembly that is the table is attached onto the mandibular occlusal rim onto the buccal surface and the stylus is attached onto the maxillary buccal surface. So this is attached in such a way that the uh, tracing table should be parallel to the maxillary occlusal plane and this should not interfere with the incisal guide table. Now the stylus unit that is attached to the maxillary rim is provided with a spring loading so that the stylus can move. So this is the stylus here. So this is with a spring loading so that it can move in a vertical direction. So when there is protrusive movement when the rims approximate this spring loading helps to accommodate that movement. So the stylus can move in a vertical direction. So this is how the tracing unit is attached. You can see the tracing assembly that is the uh, tracing table and the stylus both are parallel to each other and then it should not interfere with the incisal fin and also we have to check the stylus movement whether it is contained within the tracing table. So once this is verified you have to place it in the patient's mouth and then the patient is asked to make protrusive and retrusive movements only. So by doing this protrusive and retrusive movement you will get a consistent point that is a centric relation point. So once the consistency at centric relation point is obtained then patient is asked to make excursive movement one after the other. So first the patient is asked to make right lateral and come back to centric then left lateral and come back to centric. So you have to train the patient few times then only he will be able to make uh, the tracing in a singular line. So once you get the proper tracing in a singular line then you have to apply a thin layer of contrast medium onto the tracing table. So contrast medium can be a Kelsen spray, a marker pen, wax or a mix of zinc oxide eugenol and spirit. So here in the first figure it is the contrast medium is zinc oxide eugenol and spirit and this is the wax medium. So once this contrast medium is applied then you have to ask the patient to do the jaw movements again. Thus you obtain the gothic arch tracing. So you can see the arrow point here. So this arrow point is the centric relation and then this is the protrusive with right lateral and left lateral. So the protrusive right lateral and left lateral can be obtained in a single line or a straight line and also the tracing obtained from the protrusive movement need not always be a straight line because it is controlled by both the joints. Next step is to make the centric and protrusive records. 
So for this first an arc is drawn on the tracing using a caliper which will cut at 6 mm distance on all the lines from the centric point. So here you can see using a caliper at 6 mm distance on all the lines from the centric point an arc is drawn. Now why is this 6 mm? It's an important shared side viva question and I have done a short video on it. Uh, do comment below this video if you know the answer to it. Now once this arc is drawn then you have to make the record. So the number of records obtained is based on the type of the articulator used. So here we use the Hanau wide view and here two records are to be made one at the centric and second at the protrusive point. And in articulators like dentatus we require records made on the lateral tracings also. So before making the records you have to make the stylus point stable at the desired points that is at the centric and the protrusive. And for this we use a plastic template. So a plastic sheet is selected and it is trimmed according to the shape of the uh, tracing table and then using the uh, micromotor handpiece a fine hole is drilled at the centric point and also at 6 mm protrusion. So here you can see two holes are drilled one at the centric and the other is at 6 mm protrusion. Now once these holes are drilled then you have to um, place the or stick the tracing table or the plastic template onto the tracing table using the sticky wax and it is placed at proper accurate position. So now you have fixed the plastic template onto the tracing table so that you can hold the stylus at the desired point that is at the centric and at protrusion while making the record. Now once this is done you have to now make the record for that first on the wax rim triangular locating notches extending to buccal surfaces are prepared both on the maxilla as well as the mandible. So triangular locating notches are prepared and then petroleum jelly is applied all over this uh, locating notches as well as the metal surface which will act as the separating medium between the plaster and the wax. Now uh, you can use the accelerated mix of plaster to make the record both the centric and the protrusive. So either you can ask the patient to hold the stylus first at the centric position and the accelerated mix of plaster can be injected between the upper and the lower occlusal rib or else plaster mix can be spread first on the mandibular plate and then it can be placed in the patient's mouth and patient's mandible is guided to the required position. And the excess material that is flowing out through the sides should be wiped out. And once this plaster is set, the assembly is carefully removed and the record is carefully separated out. So this is the record. You can see this is the centric record. You can see here the triangular locating notches is replicated here. And this is the protrusive record. And these records are considered to be accurate if the central bearing point makes a clear perforation in the plaster record that is in centric. So here you can see there is a clear perforation. So we know that at the centric uh, position the uh, central bearing point has to make a point contact with the central bearing plate that is attached to the maxillary rib. So if it is in such a way then there will be a clear perforation like this in the centric record. So these records are accurate and now these records are used to program our Hano wide view articulator. So in programming first the centric record has to be placed and it has to be found out whether it matches with our tentative centric relation. So first we have to ver verify the centric record and while programming the following components should be stabilized as a single unit that is the primary base of the maxillary working cast then the maxillary denture base with the central bearing device and the extraoral tracer, the interocclusal record. So first we are using the centric record and then the mandibular denture base with the central bearing point and the extraoral tracer and the mandibular working cast. So all these components should be stabilized as a single unit. And for this we use retentive pins that are incorporated into the upper cast and the lower cast and secured using cyanoacrylate. Okay. So first fine holes can be drilled on the cast two on upper and two on the lower cast 
and while fixing the maxillary pins care should be taken to drill the holes well below the split and before securing the pin the split has to be separated now using a thread the lower cast the lower base plaster record upper base and upper cast should be secured as a single block and the incisal guide pin and the stylus can be raised at this point and they need not make contact with the respective tables so now all these components act as a single unit by means of these retentive pins and secured using a thread now the next step the upper member of the articulator with the upper split of the cast should be approximated so at this point it is desirable to release the centric lock so when the upper member of the articulator with the upper split of the cast is approximated both the parts of the split cast must must approximate closely so while it is closed if the condylar spheres are making contact with the respective centric stops it can be considered that the centric tentative centric is matching with our graphic tracing so in the parts of the hano you know, articulator while we were discussing we have discussed about these uh, respective centric stops in the uh, condyla housing so while it is closed if the condyla spheres are making contact with their respective stops that means that our tentative centric is matching with our graphic tracing if it is not matching it is desirable to go back to the check bite and re-register the tentative centric and repeat the entire process now if the centric matches then the articulator can be programmed so up to this stage articulator simulated the patient in opening and closing movement now the articulator can be used to make translatory movements for which the horizontal condylar path has to be adjusted similar to the condylar path inclination present in the patient so for this purpose we use the protrusive record so we have to remove the centric record place the protrusive record and the cast are secured in a similar manner the centric lock as well as the thumb screw present behind, behind the condylar housing should be released so that both the condylar elements and the condylar parts can be moved now the upper member with the upper split cast is approximated if there is a gap the brass disc containing the condylar path can be moved so that the split completely gets obliterated so when it is obliterated the upper member and the lower member should be held tight and note down the condylar path set by itself so the path is fixed at this point by tightening the screws and then the lateral condylar path in the heno articulator is adjusted using the formula and that will be approximately 15 degree so we know the formula l is equal to h by 8 plus 12 now from now onwards the articulator will function as a simulator of the patient's jaw with movement cap capability both in opening and in translation so this is how we do the programming so first we use the centric record and prove that our tentative centric are matching with our graphic tracing then we place the protrusive record and we noted the horizontal condylar inclination angle and using this angle we found out the bennett angle which is approximately 15 degree so this is how we program a hano wide view articulator so i hope everyone have followed the technique of programming and i have referred the article programming the semi adjustable articulator by dr chandrashekaran nair sir which was published in the trends of prosthodontics 2011 edition and we have followed this technique of programming during our post graduate course and even for our practical exam so any of you if you are doing it in a different way in or a, like a modified version of this classic technique please do let me know by commenting below this video so i hope everyone have understood programming well and if you have any queries you are always free to ask me either you can comment below this video or you can directly mail me at, at the mail id of the uh, programming topic so first the maxillary cast is mounted to the upper member of the semi adjustable articulator using silco record and with a split cast then mandibular cast is mounted using tentative centric record once this is done we have to attach the central bearing plate and central bearing point to the occlusal rib while maintaining the established vertical dimension so on to the maxillary occlusal rim the central bearing plate is submerged whereas mandibular occlusal rim it is reduced up to 4 mm and then 
the central bearing point is that the plate that is carrying the central bearing point is in flush with the modified mandibular occlusal ring so in such a way it is placed and then the tracing assembly is attached so tracing table is attached to buccal surface of mandibular occlusal ring and tracing assembly containing the stylus is attached to the maxillary ring and this should be attached in such a way that it does not interfere with the incisal guide table now after this is attached we do the tracing so we make the patient train the jaw movement and we get the gothic arch tracing on a contrast media and then using a plastic template we have to mark the point that is 6 mm from the central relation point on all these lines so once the point is marked using a plastic template you have to hold the stylus at that point and once this is done you have to record the centric record as well as the protrusive record you have to make the registration okay so once the records are obtained that is at the centric and at 6 mm protrusion then the pins are fixed onto the cast to act as a single unit and uh, then the centric relation is checked first the centric record has to be verified first whether it matches with our tentative centric relation and then the protrusive record is used and we adjust the horizontal condylar inclination and we get the horizontal condylar angle and then we find out the Bennett angle using the formula L is equal to H by A plus Z. So this is how we do the programming of the semi-adjustable articulator that is here Hano YP. Concluding our session, the mouth of the patient is often considered as the best articulator. However, it is not mechanically possible to perform many procedures intraorally which are involved in the construction of fixed or removable prosthesis. Hence, for the convenience of the patient, the dentist and the dental laboratory technician, it becomes necessary to use an analog for jaw movement that is the articulator. And articulators are not always used to their full capabilities. Regardless of simplicity or complexity of articulator, its effectiveness actually relies on the operator's understanding of its features, the accuracy of registering and transferring patient's jaw relation, and how the operator uses it. I repeat the Carl Obolcher statement that is, it must be recognized that the person operating the instrument is more important than the instrument. And if dentists understand articulators and their deficiencies, they can compensate for their inherent inadequacies. These are my references. Thank you all for watching my video. Please do like and share my videos if you are finding these videos useful. And if you are new to this channel, please, please do subscribe and support me. If you have any queries, topic suggestions or feedback, you can comment below the video or you can mail me at this mail ID. So, it's a bye from Prosto Hub until our next session with a fresh topic.